that has really challenged my notion of what it means to say that something is good. Because right? I do not believe that the things that we see that are wrong or harmful in biology in the world is a consequence of fallenness or sin. Um, I think that that is a, an easy answer um, at first, but if you follow that rabbit hole, you get all kinds of problems, um, and it, a, lot, a lot doesn't really line up there, right? Um, so at, even from a theological and from a scientific standpoint, that doesn't hold a lot of water to me, right? And so I'm left to then wonder, what the heck does it mean that God made these things and made it that way such that cancer can come about and this and that, um, and then call it good, right? One of, the, one of the things I've come to understand about what good means is it may not be the way that, may not be defined by God in the way that we want it to be. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a mystery about what it might mean, but to me fundamentally it's that the, the created things that he put in created spaces are doing the things they're supposed to be doing, right? Like it's like the, to me the basic definition of what it, it is to be good, right? And that necessarily involves the things we see that are wondrous and beautiful and awesome and the things that we're like, my gosh, this is devastating, right? Everything from biological, the mutations that can lead to cancer to natural disasters, right? But the thing, Reagan, that I keep coming up with every time I find myself struggling with that, and I, I go through cycles, but every time I'm struggling with that, I also realize without those things, we wouldn't have life as we know it. We actually wouldn't, right? And we can get into the details of why that is, but that has been shown to be true time and time again, whether it's in the biological examples you provided, whether it's in the physical world and plate tectonics and tornadoes and stuff, the life and the diversity that that brings about that we celebrate simply wouldn't exist without it, right? And so it just leads me to think that maybe it is a part of the way that it's like God is saying, there is a risk that is inherent to love and life. And that risk is worth it to me. And we can sometimes get angry at God and say, who are you to say whether it's worth it to you or not? And at that point, there is this sense, you know, when Paul says, does the, does the pot say to the clay maker, make me this way, make me that way, right? So I do think at some point there's a surrender that comes as someone who follows God. But, um, but yeah, I, I do think that it's God's way of saying that there is a risk that things can go awry. But there is a chance of something so beautiful that it's worth it. And it's maybe not unlike the way that we decide to get into human relationships, right? Like when I decided to date my wife or to then propose to her, right? Um, I was pretty sure, right? But like, I don't know, there's this chance of being hurt. And those who have been hurt in relationships will really know what I mean by this, right? And then it just feels like this is not worth it. And more often than not, nine times out of ten, we're back on the horse. Because there seems to be a truth in it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. And it's almost as though that's what God is saying, right? Is that I want you so bad. And I want to be in relation with you so bad. That, but I don't want to make robots, and, and, and I want to make a world that has this creative freedom because that's where real love can transpire. But to do that, there has to be a risk.